The Twins have a new hitting coach, David Popkins. Let's talk about him, what he may bring, and also review the seasons of Taylor Rogers and Tyler Duffy on today's episode of Locked On Twins. <laughs> You are Locked On Twins, your daily Minnesota Twins podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome to the Locked On Minnesota Twins podcast. Today is Monday, November 1st, and I'm a gracious host at Nash Walker. Thank you for making Locked On Twins your first listen every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms. Back this week, it's November. October is over. The World Series not yet over. Really encourage you to listen to Lockdown MLB, listen to Lockdown Braves, Lockdown Astros. Amazing content across the network right now for the World Series. Highly encourage you to go listen um, to them. And they're doing a great job throughout this World Series. Now, Game 6 in Houston looks like maybe the Astros have the momentum going back. We had some clips from Gordon Beckham last week. We'll bring him back in tomorrow and break down his comments about the World Series. But at most, there are two more games left in this baseball season. So we're dangerously close to the offseason, officially kicking off for all 30 teams. 28 teams already have begun their offseasons, including the Twins. Today, we're going to talk about David Popkins, the Twins' new hitting coach. We're also going to review the seasons of Taylor Rogers and Tyler Duffy, the Twins' two best relievers entering the 2021 season and perhaps the 2022 season as well. We'll talk about their years and the Twins' decisions on them in arbitration and, and what their 2021 seasons could mean for those decisions. Let's talk about David Popkins. Twins have hired a new hitting coach and – I was a big fan of Edgar Barella. Uh, I thought it made a lot of sense at the time, losing James Rousen. It hurt. And and coming off 2019 and, and knowing, I mean, that there's a certainty. And I know it can't be proven. You can't, you can't prove a hitting coach, a manager, anything like that. You can't prove that they made an impact. James Rousen with Miguel Sano in 2019, them working together, I think definitely impacted Miguel Sano. And I think he impacted a lot of Twins hitters. I think he had a good relationship with the group and the Marlins thought so too. So the Marlins hired away James Rousen to be their bench coach and the twins lost him. Edgar Varela moved up. Rudy Hernandez remained and was the co-hitting coach. Uh, but I liked Varela. I mean, I, I liked uh, what he brought. And I think looking at his track record with the system, knowing the twins, um, I thought it made a lot of sense. And also I'm of the opinion, like these are established big league hitters. We're talking about Nelson Cruz and Josh Donaldson and Max Kepler, guys in their late 20s, if not 30s. Uh, how much does a hitting coach really impact what they do? I'm skeptical about it. Maybe you feel differently, and I could uh, probably be talked into that perspective as well. But David Popkins is now the Twins hitting coach. Edgar Varela has been reassigned to the minors. It was obvious in the shortened 2020 season, and there were some really weird performances around baseball in that shortened year. But the Twins' offense was one of the biggest disappointments, I think, around the league. The Twins' offense with Josh Donaldson, he only played 28 out of 60 games, and you add in the two playoff games, 28 out of 62 total games, uh, adding in those playoff games because the Twins didn't hit outside of Nelson Cruz, two RBI doubles. That was it in the playoffs when they got swept by the Astros at home. Their offense was super disappointing. Pitching staff was outstanding. And then I'd say to get off to this start this year, outside of Byron Buxton, everyone, it felt like, started slow. Buxton and Cruz, that was it. Um, you know, it felt like, well, Donaldson was on the aisle right away. Kepler, Sano, Garver, Polanco, felt like everyone started slow and kind of continued on from struggling in 2020. And it just feels like maybe it is best to, to have a little bit of a shakeup here. I don't necessarily disagree with a shakeup and bringing in David Popkins. He's 31 years old. Uh, he was the hitting coach for high A Great Lakes in the Dodgers system. Great Lakes led the high A central and OPS at homers this year. So, uh, you know, he had a good, good hitting group there in Great Lakes. Again, how much can be credited? We don't know, but there's a little bit of uh, correlation doesn't mean causation. Uh, and yes, Edgar Varela has been reassigned. So Twins bringing in Popkins. And what we know, Dan Hayes doing a great job reporting on this. Twins are looking for a more technical hitting coach. They want someone who can break down a swing. You know, there's kind of, there's this sense that the analytics and the, and the technical aspect of pitching that has kind of taken over in recent years is kind of trickling into hitting and the Twins don't want to be left behind in that. So 
the force plate action, all these technology tools that hitters will use. Uh, they wanted someone who's well-versed and can communicate that data. And I think they felt like David Popkins can do that. And he's 31 years old. He was playing uh, as recent as 2017 in the Cardinal system and actually was was pretty good in the minors, you know, had some years where he really hit the ball well. In 2016, 94 games, hit 281 with a 944 OPS uh, in the Indy League. I guess, so yes, he was in the Indy League um, in 2016, but hit the ball really well. So he's had some some success, a lot of walks, it looks like, uh, in his short minor league career. But David Popkins uh, brought in to be the Twins hitting coach. It'll be interesting to see if there's any big changes next year. But this is mostly, I think, mostly impactful for Trevor Larnick, Alex Kirloff, Austin Martin, maybe when he comes up, Royce Lewis, when he comes up, uh, it's important to have who you want to have for the, for the guys that are coming, not necessarily the Kepler's, the Sinos, the Buxton's, the Garver's, you know, those guys established veterans. It's more so for the young guys coming up for Larnick, Kirloff, and, and those others I mentioned, uh, very important to have the right leadership and the right people there. Not to, not to say Edgar Varela was the wrong guy. I think, um, you know, it sounded like he had a really good relationship with a lot of the guys too. So um, that's not a, and clearly the twins love him and, and wanted to keep him in the minor league system and, and respect him a lot. So they did, they, they kept him uh, in the organization. So uh, we'll see what David Popkins excited to hear more about him really haven't, you know, gotten a ton of information about him, but I'm sure we'll hear more uh, in the coming weeks as we, as we get going in the off season, but let's take a short break and talk about direct TV. When we come back, let's break down the season of Taylor Rogers, high expectations this year after a down 2020. Let's talk about him after the break. First, I'm going to tell you about direct TV. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live. Another that lets you stream your favorite shows. You're watching sports highlights on your phone and you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff. I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream. Direct TV Stream, it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. I will tell you, I watched the Minnesota Vikings lose to Cooper Rush and the Dallas Cowboys last night on Direct TV Stream because my family uses it. Really like it a lot. And you get the Twins, Valley Sports North. Uh, which is great. Get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. Like I said, it's a really good system, uh, DirecTV Stream. We really enjoy using it and uh, watch the Twins and Vikings on DirecTV Stream. Thanks for making Locked on Twins your first listen every day. We are free and available on all podcast platforms. Let's talk about Taylor Rogers and his season Another one of those guys, like Alex Kirilov, coming into the year, high expectations in terms of the the value that they'd bring. I mean, I, I expected Alex Kirilov to be an instant contributor in left field and certainly expected Taylor Rogers out of the back of the bullpen to bounce back from a poor ERA in 2020. And when we talk about Taylor Rogers, and we talked about Taylor Rogers in 2020, it's very important to talk about the difference between his ERA and his FIP. And his FIP, fielding independent pitching, is basically – what your ERA, ERA should be based on things you can control. So strikeouts, home runs, walks. Taylor Rogers is phenomenal in those areas, so always has a low FIP. And it's it's kind of a luck statistic in some ways of here's what we expect your ERA to be, and the difference between those two things can predict future success. So when you looked at Taylor Rogers in 2020, a really low FIP again, basically the same FIP up to that point of his career, but he had an ERA over four. Even with the shortened season in 2020, which again is such a small sample, especially for a reliever. So the numbers are going to be skewed and bad luck can hurt you way more because you don't have time to make up for that bad luck and even things out over 162 when you're only playing 60 games. But Taylor Rogers from 2018 to 2020, 157 and a third, 2.80 ERA, 2.62 FIP, 32% strikeout rate and a 4% walk rate. And you again, you can understand why his FIP is so low because the strikeouts, the walks, he's elite. Like that's an elite strikeout to walk rate. He's such a strike thrower, but also gets swings and misses in the zone. His slider was not as sharp in 2020, so there were things that were a little bit off with him. But expected a bounce back campaign in 2021. Pakota did as well. 3.12 ERA projected. Uh, 3.41 FIP is a little bit up there, but 0.7. 
uh, right about 0.7 wins above replacement projected for Taylor Rogers in 2021. And the results were uh, what we expected in his first 36 and two thirds, Taylor Rogers, 2.45 ERA. So he's back to being the guy uh, we knew from 2018, 2019, the same Taylor Rogers, 2.02 FIP, 35% strikeout rate and a 5% walk rate. So right back to the guy we know. Like I said, just it's Taylor Rogers, the shutdown late inning closer uh, slash reliever with the Twins bringing in Colome to play those matchups. Something I agreed with and thought was smart. Um, I guess looks bad now, but Taylor Rogers, the first thirty six and two thirds, he was mostly nails. Overall, was great, and then he gave up a grand slam to Jake Rogers at Target Field. And here's another example of how a sample, even over one sixty two, can really impact a reliever. You give up a grand slam in one inning, you have four earned runs. When you only throw 50 or 60 innings in a season, that can really skew your ERA. And then there's this. Taylor Rogers was shortened. His season was shortened again this year because of a finger injury. So that grand slam held even more weight. He was shut down two, two weeks later with the finger injury. And maybe it was impacting him then too, right before the All-Star break. Um, but came out of it, threw a couple pitches over the backstop, got pulled out, never pitched again for the rest of the season. And on the year, only threw 40 and a third. 3.35 ERA, 2.13 FIP. So a, a run in a 1.25 run difference basically between his ERA and FIP there, um, which is big. And, and it shows it shows that that grand slam did carry a lot of weight because to that point he was great. And then he gave up two more runs after that outing where he gave up the grand slam, I think against Detroit again. Could be wrong on that. Um, but it really did impact his overall line. And it, it, it shifts how we should feel about Taylor Rogers when you just look at the stat line. Because if you look at the stat line, it looks like he's washed. It looks like he was bad in 2020 and he was eh, in 2021. Well, that's that's not the case. 2020, and I'm not here to just sit and defend Taylor Rogers because you know I like Taylor Rogers. It, you look at the numbers and you watched him, and he was he was back to who he was this year, and it was obvious. And the velocity's there. The slider velocity was back. The strikeouts were there. The command was as good as ever. He looked he looked like the Taylor Rodgers we know. So I'm confident in him when he's healthy. What well, was a huge question mark in his arbitration, and if the Twins offer him that projected 7.1 or so million in his final year before free agency, is that the finger injury is something that can linger, and, and he was shut down, and and that's scary. You know, you worry about an injury like that for a reliever, and and how volatile they can be. It's it's. Scary, I'll admit. But here's the thing. Taylor Rogers is a leader in that bullpen. He's the Twins' MLBPA rep. He's going to be busy, I'm sure, this offseason with CBA talks. I don't see the Twins non-tendering Taylor Rogers. I would be really surprised by it. I also said I'd be surprised if the Twins traded Jose Barrios at the deadline. So um, I've been wrong about it before, but I would be surprised. I think for even $7 million next year, if you have even a little bit of confidence that he'll be healthy on opening day and that and you get that that confidence this offseason, you keep him because you're not going to find someone like him likely when he's healthy in free agency. You're not going to find anyone for seven million bucks. And it's not like you have to commit to him for three years. You know, he's not a free agent. It's one year, seven million dollar option basically in arbitration. I think Taylor Rogers will be back. I think it's about 80% that he'll be back. Uh that could be high. They could pick up his arbitration number and then trade him. That's a possibility. But uh, right now, my prediction is that Rodgers will be back if the Twins feel that he'll be healthy. Now, if they don't think his finger is fully healed later in this offseason when they're making these, I guess they have to make these decisions a little bit earlier. But without surgery, because he didn't get surgery on the finger, how they feel, how he feels, all of those things will be very important in this decision and, and whether the Twins offer him arbitration. After the break, let's talk about Tyler Duffy. Taylor Rogers, his grade on the season is going to be an A minus because I thought he was very, very good. The minus is for the Grand Slam and then the uh, subsequent two runs. I think he gave up two runs in his next outing in less than an inning. So A minus for Raj, mostly very good. Got hurt, which sucks, and and he's great when he's healthy. Um, I'm excited to see him back if he is in 2021 or 2022. Excuse me, pitching for the Twins. Let's take a break. Talk about Bill Barr and then Tyler Duffy. I love Thanksgiving's my favorite holiday, legitimately my favorite holiday and all of the good food and treats. There's plenty of them, but maybe you want a yummy dessert that isn't so full of calories and sugar this Thanksgiving. For me, type one diabetic, that's huge. Something like Bilt Bar. You can feast on something delicious and feel good about it. And for me, I feel good about not really jacking up my blood sugar. One slice of pie has upward of 300 calories and that's on the low end. 
Most built bars are only 130 calories and only four grams of sugar. That's that's the big part, and there's plenty of protein. Replace the coconut cream pie with coconut built bar. Or go for a raspberry built bar instead of that raspberry pie. Lots of good flavors to replace any pie. Plus, right now, there's nothing like a built bar Black Friday. Mark your calendar. Black Friday will be a huge event with all sorts of surprises. You don't want to miss out on built bars' great offers. Go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and you'll get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. One of the best developments of the 2019 Twins kind of gets pushed under the radar, especially after the season he just had. Not a great season. But Tyler Duffy's emergence after being optioned in the first half, how good he was for the Twins in the second half out of the bullpen, Unbelievable, 94-95 with the fastball, and then that curveball that still remains unhittable, even if his stuff looks a little bit depleted this year. But uh, Tyler Duffy turned himself into one of the best relievers in the game and one of the best firemen in the game. From 2019 to 2020, he pitched in 80 games, had a 231 ERA, 291 FIP, 34% strikeout rate, 6% walk rate. He was seventh in wins above replacement over at Fangraphs among qualified American League relievers, and he was 11th in FIP. So actually a top 7 to 10 reliever in the American League. And if you just whittled that down to like setup men, he's probably top three in the game in terms of setting up Taylor Rogers and setting up the Twins in 2019 and 2020. So the expectation is so that's what we're going to get in 2021. Uh, Pakota had him. Somewhere around there, 3.07 ERA, 0.73 warp. So Pakota had Tyler Duffy for more wins above replacement projection than Taylor Rogers. That's how good Duffy's been, uh, how good he had been in 2019. And then a sub-2 ERA in 2020 was great again with a huge strikeout rate. The results this year were not what we expected. First 15 and a third had a 5.87 ERA. He blew up in Anaheim against the Angels. I think that included where he threw at Yermin Mercedes. So it's just a disastrous first 15 innings for him. 20% strikeout rate, 14% walk rate. And I remember there was concern, and I talked about it, and I probably talked people off the ledge about it, but Tyler Duffy's fastball velocity was down in spring training. He was throwing like 90-91 with the fastball, and I think he was getting beat around too, and it was, it, it was concerning. And I remember I think the Twins or someone came out and said, you know, some guys regain their velocity a little bit later. You don't always show velocity in spring training. He didn't really regain his velocity from 2019. His fastball velocity is down 1.4 miles an hour from 2019, so almost a tick and a half. And with it, his strikeout rate's down and his walk rate is up. Now, after those first 15 and a third, this is very important. I always talk about in life and in baseball, how do you respond when you have a poor stretch over a larger sample? He was great for the rest of the year. His last 47 innings, 2.30 ERA, so basically on par with who he was in 2019 and 2020 combined, but the difference was the strikeout rate, 25% strikeout rate, and the walks were up at 10%. Uh, He was top 25 on the season in the American League in terms of ERA among qualified relievers, and he was top 33 in wins above replacement. But like I mentioned, fastball below was down. Strikeout rate was down 10% from 2019 to 2020, and his walk rate was up 5%. So you look on the surface, and Tyler Duffy had a good year. You know, if you just looked at Tyler Duffy as a right handed reliever, uh, even if you looked at the whole line, which includes those first 15 innings, you'd say he had a solid year for the Twins. He was a good setup man again, got them out of some big time jams. Like he's very good, you know, at the bases loaded and, and zero outs or one out is when Rocco loves to go to him. And and for the most part, he's really delivered in those spots over the last three years. But why you feel a little hesitant, even when you look at his arbitration number, which I think is going to be around three and a half million, is because the velocity is declining, the strikeout rate's declining, the command might be slipping a little bit. And this isn't a guy who is, you know, bred as a top-of-the-line prospect as a reliever. Tyler Duffy was moved to the bullpen and had a great season and a half, if you're including... 2020 actually the second half of 2019 plus the shortened 2020 season that's probably one full season of being a very good reliever 80 innings maybe a season and some change uh in 19 and 20 so there's not the biggest track record of success here there's not you can't look back and say well you know in the minor leagues tyler duffy was a dominant reliever and you know we've seen him lose his velocity before and he gains it back i don't think you can say those things so there's there's a little bit of concern for me with Duffy, I'm going to give him a B- minus for the season because he did bounce back and pitch 
pretty well. He hurt them a lot in those first 15 and the third because he pitches in high leverage spots. And, and if he if he struggles, it hurts you more than if, you know, Jorge Alcala struggles, who, who's not in as high leverage of spots. So he gets a B minus for the season, even though his final line looked pretty decent. I'm nervous about him. Like, I don't, I don't love the peripherals. I don't know how long you can get by. It seemed like he kind of squeezed his way through some innings this year. He'd get in jams, and then he'd find a way to get out of it. And like I said, some guys are good at that. Like, that might be a discernible skill for Tyler Duffy, and that's why Rocco loves to go to him in those spots because he finds a way out of, out of jams. But you can only get yourself in so many jams before you get hurt. And I, I just wonder, with less swings and misses, with a declining strikeout rate, with that velocity down, I wonder uh, how you can project Tyler Duffy next year if you can say confidently that you expect him to be around the same guy he was the last three seasons. I don't know, and that's an interesting decision for the Twins. Again, my hunch, 80%, like it is with Rodgers, that Duffy will be back. Um, but I'd like to see – he's a guy like in spring training in March, see where the velocity is at and see if he's getting back to that spot because I think it's really uh, pivotal for him. But B-minus for Duffy, A-minus for Rodgers. We welcome David Popkins the organization hopefully he brings uh, a little pizzazz and uh, gets this offense going a little bit but we'll never be able to tell folks unless there's just raving reviews and even then you know how, how can you measure it it's really difficult thanks so much for listening have a great day please consider subscribing to the channel follow me on twitter at nash walker nine follow the show out live on twins leave a comment let me know what you think we'll be back tomorrow talking world series game six uh continuing on with jorge alcala killed deal bar in the bullpen with our report cards. We're almost done. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. And thank you again for listening. Happy November. Go Twins.